This is a, a gem, right? We went over gems in mod one, and actually it's, uh, it's two years old. It was last updated three months ago, so you know that this is somewhat current, right? If you see that all of these are years ago, you know that nobody's actually looking at this repository. It's not very new. What this is going to do, and the gem's called Corneal, by the way. It's a Sinatra app generator. And what that's going to do is when you run this gem command, it's going to scaffold and build an entire skeleton for you for Sinatra. So you, so you don't ever have to really memorize the, each individual folder and have to build Sinatra from scratch as long as you know where everything is, right? Like the MVC we talked about, model view controller. So as long as you understand that and you know where it is, it's located in app, you should be okay, right? If I need to create a migration file, like where is that going? That's probably going to be my DB folder. Like I have a general idea of where things are. You don't have to memorize it from scratch. So what good documentation looks like is, well, this is why it exists. But ultimately, how do I get it? So I just gem install Corneal. So let's do that, right? I can just gem install Corneal. Um, I have it, so the installation is kind of fast. And then immediately, it says, what are all the commands available to me? Here's how I can use it. So when you start to create amazing products on the internet, shortcuts, things like that, make sure the documentation is good. Because one of the most important things about code is code is never to be used like alone in isolation. Not never, but you know, it's generally for other people, right? We're a very open source community. Unless we're talking about like intellectual property, like you shouldn't be like sharing your company secrets online. But if you want to build something that's useful for other people, then it'd be good to have really good documentation to show how to use it. And so here it just says Corneal new app name. So let's build an app. Um, what do you guys like to build? Otherwise, we will build books again, which is always super exciting. Or do you want to build Murder Face? Books. <laughs> books. Murder face. Sure, Murder Face it is. Um, here, it, it doesn't really mean anything. This is just like the name of the app. Like for example, uh, it was from a uh, from mod five. <laughs> God, God bless you. Or, or in, in May's language. Um, <laughs> it, it was recorded. It was recorded. Yeah. So you could, you could, you could play that. <laughs> now there's competition. You know? So, so for example, like in, in the previous mod, uh, we had a many to many, and it was like police officers, like law enforcers, and like criminals. So I made the the app name uh, Florida Man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like the title of what your application is going to do and what it's going to be. But for now, um, we just need anything generic. Um, we're just going to build tables out, and I'm going to show you Sinatra again and show the code in the browser using Rust for routing and CRUD. So, so what would you like to build? Something that just has like a lot of something like books or articles or murder faces, whatever you want. Sure. <laughs> so according to this, it just says Corneal New and then the app name. So let's do that. Corneal New and then murder face. Should we, should we keep it real? Yeah. Thanks, like this. Is that going to break it? <laughs> Actually, you know what? So what a way to find out. Let's test, yeah? Oh, bam! It took it. Right? Huh? It did? Let me see. Oh, murder face. Uh, even better. How ironic. Right? Keeping it real over here. So it creates all of this for you. Do you remember I talked about like how awesome Rake was and that Rake can run Ruby? So probably what's happening under the hood here is it's using Rake to generate all of these files and input lines in those files already for you. And that's just done through the gem, right? So Ruby's writing Ruby. And so if we want to CD into Murderface, um, here we can take a look at Adam and see what we have. Cool. So what we have is, we have the skeleton, murder face, we have app, we have our controllers, models, and views, we have our config with the initializers, we have the environment file, db is just migrate for now, there's nothing else in there, we have the library which we won't use yet, 
This is where all of your CSS, your JavaScript, and your images will live. This is like a new folder that I'm trying to introduce to you. This is where you put all of your style sheets and everything that's going to style it. And I'm going to jump into that here in the lecture in a little bit. Uh, you have our favorite, right, where the Power Rangers live. And config that are you. This right here is a built-in error message, right? Imagine you just created a new app. You created your, you created your migrations, but they have not run yet. This is just going to tell you, like, oh, hey, by the way, I know you created that migration, and you want to spin up your server, you want to run Shotgun and be all super cool, um, but there's no data in there. Like, did you forget to run your migrations? And so this is how error messages come up, right? We learned about this, a little raise action. Here's the gem file, right? This is what's going on. This is everything we need. If you want to look into more about what certain things do, like Thin or Bcrypt, uh, you can. You will learn way more about Bcrypt in Mod 2, and it is a, a two-part lecture, so it's intense. Uh, it's about off, and you'll learn about that. And here we have Rake. Unfortunately, our boy does not put in. Um, Sweet. Try sesh. I'm saying, what is it? Task? Uh, that, that looks right, right? Uh, I'll figure it out. We'll, we'll see what happens. All right, cool. We'll see what happens. Um, look up. Just kidding. So, yeah. what a great error message. So I have a gem file, but because I don't have the gem file lock, that means I never ran bundle. So let's bundle. Cool. So while that's installing, let's keep going. And this is just like a generic readme that has nothing in it. So I'm going to try making as many comments as possible. Yesterday I failed you because I just wanted to make sure I got through the material. But today I'm going to like spell it out for you, right? I want your hand like a candy candy store because all of this needs to make sense. So if you have any questions, this would be the the lecture to start asking. Yeah. Well, I have a question. Uh, Anything. App.rb? Yeah. Some of the leopards are size. In the labs. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Uh, so the labs, uh, very good question. The labs are designed to kind of get you to understand what's happening. This right here is going to just be a generic skeleton, and this is how it should be in the end. In the similar way, uh, after supper had ended, now we took the chalice. And in mod one, there are a lot of labs that if you were to go back and redo, would not make that much sense because they're designed to just spin you up into what's happening next. There were labs where it would ask you to make a class and not define the initialize method. Do you remember that? And then it would pass the test because you would hard code the instance variable later. You would never really make a class without an initialize method. So it's designed to just show you that you can do certain things, where they're coming from, and how it works. And then later on, like, hey, this is the right way to kind of do things. So for those labs, the controls might be at the root level because it's designed to show you, like, hey, this is where the controller is. We're focusing on the controller today. I don't want you to have to, like, dig around to try to find it. Yeah? But it should live in your app folder because in the environment, you're going to require everything in app. So that I always make sure I always have my controllers, my models, and my views. Everything in here. Yeah? Does that answer your question, John? Cool. Good question. Anything else so far? Awesome. So the question was, why is it that I don't have to write like the HTML, my doc type in all my template, right? In all my ERB files? Why is it that I could just simply write, like, hey, welcome to the index page, son, and it would be all good? Well, <coughs> in the views, we have something called layout. And this right here, can everyone see this? It's like I'm mirroring right now, so I can't really. Do you guys want the lights on or off? Uh, off? Um, <coughs> do you know which one they are, May? Just guess. Just turn on. Nice. Ooh. Thank you. 
Is that better? Yeah. Okay, cool. Huh? Yeah, I took it here, which is um, interesting. So that means that there's probably some sort of like G sub that runs when they when they do it. But either way, hopefully it doesn't break because it could be a problem. But either way, this is what happens in layout, right? You have the, your your doc type here, right? You have your head tag with <coughs> all the important data, your title, your meta tags, right? Uh, how it's going to come in, whether or not it's compatible, your style sheets. This is also where you put like all your JavaScript, and then in your body. You have this generic div, you have a footer, and then you close it. Here we have something interesting, this yield. What do you think this yield does? Mark. That's 100% correct. Yes, exactly. This yield is going to call on the views within my views folder. So that's why I can just drop a p tag and immediately start typing, and that HTML page will render properly. It will have all of this pre-embedded in it in my ERB file, and it's going to yield it right here. That's why yesterday when I was going over and I just straight put up like, hey, this is definitely not the new page. This is the edit page. And I didn't have to put anything else. I could literally drop a form tag. It's because all of this is getting put into automatically into each one of those files, and I'm just going to yield the ERB template. Does that make sense? Is that a little bit more clear as to why I don't have to put in this whole thing? Yeah? Cool. So what's the first thing we should do in terms of uh, building out this application? Huh? Yeah, we probably need to do the exact same thing we did for Active Record this whole time, right? We need to make models and a migration. So, what do we want to build out in Murderface? I guess criminals or serial killers, victims. Great. Uh, let's just start with one model because uh, I need a, I need a hammer and crud, right? I love the enthusiasm. Just one, just one, Johnny. Also, you're making me nervous. I got to report you to Brandon. So. First thing we should do is with our model of what I guess serial killers. Okay, let's keep it PG though, right? Um, how do we create this migration? All right, All right, a little bit of this, right? What create? What serial killers? Very good, right? Yeah. I'm talking about serial killers. What are you talking about, Johnny? Yes, my lecture is being recorded. So let's not forget. Cool, serial killers. Very good. So we have this migration, right? Cool, this looks very familiar. What do we do now? Cool, and what's it called? Like this? That looks about right to me. Little do action, little table action. All right, and what do we want? Right here? Nice, noise, little this. What else? T dot brand. T dot, what? There's serial killers. Oh, you're right. Uh, let's, let's string it though, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. All right? Cool, 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 cool. So now that our migrations are created, what should. I think we do too. Good call. Good shot. Thank you. Uh, wow. I guess I'm not fully back yet. Oh, no, I must be fully back because I always miss these end blocks. I'm a bad, bad developer. So what's, uh, what's next? Now that we've created the migration, what do we need to do? Let's run those migrations, right? A little bit of this. Yeah? How can I tell if it's done? My good friend, yeah? Hey, what's up, pal? Good to go. And what do we do now? Do you want to see if it works? So how do I see if it works? Love it. All right. Well, I'll see if my rig task worked. And it does. Cool. So what should I be testing for? Who thinks it's going to work? Serial killer like this? What's it spell like in the model? 
Interesting. There is no bottle. Hey, nailed it because there's an uninitialized constant here. So smart, smart. You see how the testing will like if you like can follow, right? You'll be able to build the app every time. It's not about memorizing what you have to do. It's about like all right, what do I need here? What what is it gonna give me? How can I test this? And then it will naturally progressively follow, right? So let's build this. How do we do this? Oops. Grass? Grass. All right. Serial like this. Killer. Dot RB. Cool. Why do we do that? It's just, just convention. Right? And so what's this class? Killer? And where's this inherit from? Ooh. Try to play tricksies on you. All right. Remember, the model should be pulling from Active Record, and then the controller will be pulling in from Sinatra. Um, this is helpful because they both come from base, so it's a little bit tricky. Um, the only way I can tell you to memorize it is you remember what we did in Mod 1? We've never touched Sinatra in Mod 1, but we have touched models. And we learned Active Record in Mod 1, so. Right? Cool beans. Uh, do I need anything else for this class? I know. God, active record, so muddy. So let's try it. A little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. Cool. Empty array. Meaning that it exists. The model exists, right? So I should be able to create some. All right. And what is what are my um, attributes? Name? What is the bank? Yeah, what's the bank for? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I, uh, I guess I didn't. So. <laughs> Great question. I'm sorry for not explaining. Uh, the bang here just means that if it does not successfully create, it will spit out an error if I have validations as to, as to why. Right. So right now we haven't learned validations. That was just a, a habit of mine. But for example, like let's just say I had a validation that said that the name inside this table cannot be empty. So if I were to do name, and I did this, comma, and I did uh, brand, and I was like, uh, Captain Crunch, crunch, crunchitize me, right? It will break. If I had the bang, and if I had the validations in, it will spit back out, the name attribute can't be blank. But right now, we don't have validations. Um, I do a bang because it's, it's a habit of mine. So I'm glad you were able to catch it, and I was able to explain. So I appreciate the question. Yeah. So for now, let's just put in good data. All right. Um, we will. So who, who, what about Captain Crunch? Who is the, I guess it's the captain, right? The captain, the Capitan. Capitan. Yeah, but he'd be, he'd be eating. I mean, do you, remember when, do you remember when he messed up and he said, oops, Crunch Berries? Embarrassing. Um, so who do we have here? The leprechaun. And then what does he make? Lucky charms. They're always after me, lucky charms. Oh, his name is Lucky, right? Yeah. I forgot about that. Also, the, the leprechaun sounds, sounds creepy. It does. Um, any other secrets? Yeah. Do the silly rabbit. All right. So tricks, right? Oh, I'm sorry. His name is 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 it the tricks the rabbit. No, so just silly rabbit. Are we cool with this one? All right. And uh, and we'll go with tricks. Cool. All right. This is the last one. This is the last one. All right. So we got snap. I don't know if I should put commas in there. Snap, crackle, pop. All right. And uh, what is it? Rice Krispies. Cool. All right. So we have enough seed data. They obviously work. Um, and now our models are good. We have our migrations. So now we can get into building out this application. All right. So you see how like having a solid understanding of Active Record is just going to like streamline this process. Awesome. So. What's the first thing we need to do? Remember yesterday in the lecture I said that we were putting everything here in the application controller and that was a bit hacky? 
So now we're actually going to make our books controller. I'm sorry, our serial killer controller. That was weird. Um, serial killer controller. Wow, the, this lecture is getting out of control. <laughs> uh, and this is the class, serial killer controller. Oops. And what does this inherit from? Very good. Oops. Cool. So we talked about uh, everything in terms of CRUD, right? Yeah. Do, do you need me to like write that out or no? Oh, that's right. Okay. So, yeah, good shot. So this inherits from Sinatra Base. The application controller, uh, this is what I want to talk, touch base on. The application controller uh, is going to be like the main parent for all the other controllers, since this is kind of like where it's getting the config environment, and it's going to set where the views are. So in order to properly set all the views and have all the environment for every other controller, we want to be able to inherit from application controller. Sorry. Thank you. Any questions on why we inherit from the application controller? Later on, it will make more sense as we do authentication and we talk about like cookies and sessions. But for right now, uh, inherits from application controller because application controller is going to control the entire application. And you will see in the future that you'll probably want more than one controller. Right? And so you'll have that parent that's going to be like the main brain. The main brain. Does that make any sense? Or are you just like rolling with it for now? Okay. We can do that. Um, so for CRUD, uh, it's just all the main actions that we can do with data. Right? We talked a little bit yesterday about how to get to each piece of information. All right? So the first thing is that index, right? And this is going to show all them killers, right? So the index is just reserved because it's going to show all of them, right? So what about when you want to see a specific one, all the details of it? What would that be? Hmm? Um, find is more about um, I guess like the the Ruby in terms of like the, the database, but what would you call the actual action that we're trying to do? Find is a very good guess. Find is going to find the actual object. And then what are we going to do once we find the object? Read it. Yes, we're going to read it, right? But here, when we read it, we're going to show all of the details, right? Show one specific, right? Um, item, right, and all the deets, right, and then what else do we want to do? What is uh, what is the first thing in CRUD? Huh? Yes, we want to create, right? And then we talked about create, so make a new one. And what does that in inherently need? Or can I just go right into creating one? Right? I need some sort of form. Right? Remember, I need to be able to show a form and then take the input of the user to make a new serial killer. Right? This, yeah. Maybe I, maybe I should have put with books. <laughs> okay? And what's the last one? Right? I'm sorry, not the last one. Yeah. Um, the next one is we need to be able to update. So here we just call it edit. And that is like make changes to an existing entry, right? Whatever that entry may be books, articles, serial killers, you name it, right? This one also needs what? Form, right? And what's this last one that we need to be able to do? Huh? Destroy! Destroy! Right? Like angry eyebrows, right? Do we need the definition for this? 
I think it's okay. Is the angry eyebrows are enough? Let's just make them closer. Yeah, there we go. So here we talked about all the restful routing, right? So restful routing I mentioned was like a convention so that everyone knows how to get your data. Do you remember when you were like trying to make API calls and each one you had to read through the documentation and they were slightly different in regards to how to touch each one of the endpoints of that data. How to get the information that you wanted from the API. They were a little bit different, each one. Generally speaking, in a Rails app, they're all going to follow this REST convention so that you know exactly what type of data you're getting. Every time you're hitting, right, like a slash um, killers, you're going to get all the killers. All right? If I'm going to see one specific one, I'm going to go to a route for killers, and I want to see a specific one, right? Because I'm going to pass in that ID as the parameter, as the params, right? So I can go over this over and over and over, and it'd be kind of boring. It's designed to be boring so that you can focus on the fun stuff. So you can focus on all the features, you can focus on all the cool CSS and all that jazz. Right now, you just want to be able to do all of these main features, right? which is the four things that you can do with every application. Think about everything you've ever done like on the interwebs generally will break down to CRUD. Right? Even Twitter, you want to be able to make a tweet. Right? You want to be able to edit it. You want to be able to delete it. That's like the main functionality. And then extra features is I want to be able to follow somebody. I want to be able to retweet something. But the core functionality of Twitter is I can make a tweet all right, to my account, I can tweet, I can edit it, and I can delete it, essentially. Same thing with Bookface. Right? I can make a post, I can go live, right, push it to my account, I can upload videos, pictures, I can create pictures or posts, I can see them, I can see all of them, I can see a specific one, like on Instagram, I can see all of somebody's photos. I can see their index. I can click on a specific photo and then see what? All the details, how many likes there are on there, all the comments on them. I need to be able to create comments, edit comments, delete comments, all right? Post photos, edit photos, so that like, look fabulous. Filters, right? All that jazz. And I need to be able to delete them because I'm ugly and I don't want to share that with the world. That's enough. So that's really what it all breaks down to, right? Just everything is crud. So it's going to seem boring now, but it's because then you can add all the cool, the cool features to it. That make sense? So instead of going through all of this, because we went over it yesterday, I want to show you, uh, yeah, that didn't work out, an amazing shortcut. Something called Restular, right? And I'll slide this out to you. Oh, what's this? If they're all going to be exactly the same, why not make them exactly the same? So what are we doing? Let's just do killers for now. I want to be able to display all the killers. What's my route? Um, ignore this index. I can open this and look. I can get killers due. I need to be able to what? Define the instance variable for the view. I'm going to go into my table, killer.all. I'm going to set it to killers, and I'm going to render killers index. And that's going to show all my killers. Right? If I want to see uh, a particular one, killers ID, what? I'm going to go to killers.show with killers ID. Right? Display a specific kill. Wow, this is. I should put serial in there. Yeah, let's do that. This is going to add. Cool. All right? This is all it is. I'm going to go do serial killer. I mean, you can't copy and paste this directly because you can see already that there's an issue with this, right? Is this going to work for our application? No, because we have serial, capital K, no underscore. But this is the template, essentially, right? So I need to be able to do certain things for certain paths. Like, if I'm going to go show something, I need to be able to get that specific one. I need to be able to hit that ID, the params ID. Who needs me to go over params or would like to see params again? or understand the params. 
<clears throat> Absolutely. So now that we have this amazing template, all right, it'll be so much faster. So let's do that. Let's do. Uh, let's just let's just hard code this, right? Killer. That should work. A little bit of this. I said. Cool. All right. We probably don't want this anymore. It'll be interpolation. Got me good. Cool. Okay. So here we can do a get. Uh, up. So this is going to show all of them, right? I need to be able to touch the database, grab my data, all right? And this is going to grab all of them. And then I'm going to just basically show all of them. I'm going to ERB render the serial killer slash index. So where would I make this view page? In views, all right? Do I just put it right here in new file? Make it index? If I'm going into a folder called serial killer and doing index, do I just put a new file? And what's that folder called? Cool. And now in serial killer, I have what? Oops. Cool. And so this makes sense because as I make more applications, right, like weapons or, man, this is getting out of control, like books or articles, right? I have a books and articles controller. I'm going to have what? An index and show view for all of them. So in order to separate them, I make their own separate folder. So I'm going to have an article folder in my views, a books folder in my views. All right, so here I have index.erb. And remember, it's just going to render that HTML template for me. So just so I can make sure I hit it, I can just do what? Serial killer index. So I should now do what? Nice. Bam. Cool. So where do I go? A little bit of this. A little bit of this. Cool. I need to do what? Like this, slash index. What's going to happen? Why doesn't it know? Uh, it's not that I didn't do dot each. It's just that, let's read the error, right? It thinks that in the application controller, there is some sort of method like this. Right? In order to get it out and escape from it looking into the application controller, I need to tell it that there are other controllers that exist. So in my config.ru, I can just use uh, serial killer controller. Come on, give me that. Is it just serial killer slash index? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just slash serial killer. Why not do index? Oh yeah, and it's also serial killer. Oh yeah, here we go. Cool. Thank you. All right. Huh? Oh, look at that. Bam. OK, so I wonder, I bet you're wondering where all this like cool style came from, right? Like all this like non-generic styling as, to, like, as opposed to like yesterday's lecture where it was just literally text. So I mentioned here that in the public, we have something called style sheets, right? Under main, we have a main CSS, right? This is all some very generic styling that's happening in here. And this is coming from our layout where we are linking the style sheet in a folder called style sheets main CSS. And so every single one of my websites, every single one of my pages in my application will inherit from this style sheet. And that's how I can create a uniform look for all my web pages dynamically without making each individual one take a separate CSS file, which would be out of control. Yeah? Awesome. Cool beans.
So look, boom, serial killer index, right? We're there. Now we're now we're cooking. So I don't need this. I don't need this. All right, so let's do this. How do we get all of them? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dot each, right? Because it's a, it's an already an array. Um, I did the all on the on the table already, and I stored it in the instance variable. Yes, Chuck. What's the shortcut to get to the ice cream cones? The ice cream cones. It's Command Shift uh, period. Command yeah, period. and um, and you, you can toggle it too, right? So if you hit it again, oops, ugh. if you hit it, Command Shift, it'll do the equals. Yeah. It'll remove the equals, and then it'll comment. Yeah, so I'll, I'll show you. Yeah, and equals tab, that's the other one. Huh? Dash tab and equals tab all sort. Dash tab, right? And then equals tab, right? Cool. Yeah? So, what's the difference between the equals and the not equals? Equals renders it on the page. Yes, equals will show it on the page, right? That specific line will show on the page. So do we want this actual iteration to show on the page? Let's get rid of that. A little bit of this. All right. Do not making that mistake again. All right, serial killer. A little SK, a little CK. Cool. Do we want this to show? All right, so what do we have? CK what? We have name. All right, probably throw a little break action in here. And then, do we want the end to show? No. Oh, let's get rid of that. All right. Um, how about your, could you do that whole block except for the fact that it's equal to the not equal to one like, set of extra codes? Or? You mean with the, with the curly boys? Yeah, yeah just like, but, you know, it's like every line has its own, you know, like, group, like You can. You can. Um, that's a good question. However, as you get more detailed with your do and statements, the block becomes so long and unreadable that conventionally speaking, when you're ERB, when you're interpolating Ruby inside your HTML, you would use um, multi-line in the do and statement. But and very it's, good. It just knows that those are all the same blocks. Yeah, it's reading Ruby just like this, and it's expecting more. Like if I don't have this, it will literally say, hey, unexpected keyword end, or missing end, or end of input, like expected end of input, something like that. Yeah? Cool. Good question. Awesome. Let's do it. Nice. And there's your index page. Just like that. Thank you, Restular. All right? Nice. Now let's go. A little bit of, uh, let's go back to the controller. And we want to be able to hit that show, right? In case you forget, you can just, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to display a specific one. So I'm actually just going to do a little bit of this magic. Oop. Oh, it didn't take. Interesting. So instead of this, I'm going to do this. Get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this. Fix this capital. Cool. So here's we have params, right? And I'll show exactly what's going on. Oops. Blech. 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 Cool. So if I were to go to, right, an ID of say three, it's gonna hang, right? Which means I probably hit the binding. So in this, I'm in this right here, right? And I want to see what came through in terms of parameters from my website. So I can always check. And it became an ID of three. I can always just verify what's going on here. By instead of ID, I can put, I don't know, cool. All right, I wonder what comes up. Remember, it's interpolating, right? So let's put, ugh. What is that? 
Uh, I'm not sure how that came up, uh, but sure. So, so let's check out what params are. Oh, look at that. It says cool. That's where it's coming from. That's why ID is coming across as that key for that value, right? So what that means is this would be the key for the hash. And then whatever it is that I interpret in here because of the semicolon saying that I'm going to pass in some unknown value, right? So I can even do, say, something like um, kids, right? Actually, I probably want to exit out of this first. Yes, that sounds dangerous. God, this is a terrible project. <laughs> All right. So now that I come through, I can check params, and I could see all the cool kids. I thought that was going to be like a smart, witty thing because I thought ahead, and then you ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I can see all the cool kids, right? So cool is coming from where? Cool is coming from wherever I pass it. So if I pass it ID, I know the key is going to be ID. Right? And then whatever I pass up here is going to be the value of the params that gets interpreted. Does that make sense? So, so let's go to three without Googling something bizarre. And what do I get? Ah, I'm still in the binding. I gotta get rid of this. Look up. Look up. Look up. Oh, that's right. Perfect. So no such file or directory. All right. It's saying that in at view serial killer show, there's no file, which would make sense because that's where it's looking for it. So what would I do? I make one in the views. I just do show.herb. And then what do I have here from my controller? All right. Does this make sense now, what this is doing? I'm finding it based on this ID. I could have put, for whatever reason, cool, and with the params of cool, will still come out because it's matching that key that's coming in. And I'll show you, actually, because I can see some. Yeah, can you just explain the concept of like why, you, like theoretically, you can do all that code in the view. And I know you explained this yesterday, mm -hmm. but I went over my head a little bit. Huh? Why do we need to set that variable in the controller? As opposed to pulling it directly from the model? Yeah, exactly. OK, so um, this is the convention, which is not necessarily a great answer. But a better answer would be a separation of concerns, right? The model should just be in charge of everything in the model. The controller should be that go-between that passes in specific data. And this will get way more complicated um, than this, right? CRUD is just the beginning functionality, but later on you're going to do um, like authentication, you're going to do user login, and so you want that controller being able to be the only go between between the model and the view. Okay. Uh, you still are writing like code in the view, right? Because you were doing the dot each, you were going through to display it on the page. Yes. I am displaying it on the page based on the data the controller sends through. Um, and I'll show you that um, literally right after I go over params again. Uh, the other thing is for security, right? Yesterday, we had someone allude to the way forms are. If I had forms, right, being able to touch my model directly, I could ask the model directly for the password that I'm storing in the user class. And that would not be OK. I want to be able to go through the controller to say, hey, I'm asking for the password. And then the controller be like, whoa, I don't give that stuff out. All right, take me to dinner first. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> Great uh, question. So I'm just about the, uh, what we've got to the variables that are both at serial killer. Are those <coughs> the same instance variable, or are there those different instance variables with the same name? OK. So, Great question. We we'll talk about scope here. This right here is a do end block. So in the do end block, it's just essentially a method, right? Outside the do end block, does this exist? So in the scope of this, I have only access to this instance variable that's passing in from this route to this view. And it should be serial killers, I'm sorry. And 
So I should change this. Uh, yes. So remember, the ERB is the code that's being interpolated. So in order to bend de in order to raspberries, uh, better demonstrate, let me show you what params are, and then I will literally show you what comes through when I call this. Because this is just a method, right? Remember uh, we learned about dot send, and then it, and then I can send it stuff a long time ago. I'm just sending it this data, right? So let me do that. These are all like awesome questions. Ah, uh, that's not gonna work. Cool. So let's go to serial killer three again, and it's gonna hang, right? So here I have params coming through, all right, with the cool. Right? So if I were to do params with the key of cool, what would I get? Three. So can I do something like serial killer dot find three? What is that going to give me? Whatever serial killer with an ID of three. Right? It's, uh, it's tricks. So in the same way that instead of three, I can pass in something that's going to give me three, it will work. So I know that if I'm looking for the params based on what the URL is, I'm always going to get the matching serial killer for the matching URL. So if I'm looking at serial killer four, guess what? With params cool, I'm going to get serial killer four. If I'm looking at serial killer five, I'm going to get five. And so the dynamic route is going to match the dynamic data. I don't have to hard code these values and make separate view pages for each one. I can just say, hey, whatever the ID for that person is, give me that person. Yeah? Cool. So now. Hmm? Oh, embarrassing. Thank you. I was wondering why everyone's all like, looking at it like, wow, Evans. That don't make no sense. So, yeah, thank you. So does that make more sense? Does that clear it up a little bit? So let's take a look at what ERB actually passes through. All right, because remember I said it's just a method. So what comes through? Let's find out. So what happens when I actually pass through? Because remember I'm in the binding here. All right, I'm gonna do this. And then I'm going to send something called ERB with serial killer show. What do you think comes out? No, let's take a look. Boop. Huh, interesting. Doc type, right? This all looks pretty familiar. It's sending the entire layout. It sends it as a string. So if we were to go back to the original lecture that I sent you uh, on video with the response request cycle, your browser is making a request to here, localhost 9393, with this resource. It's going to hit the controller, it's going to do something with it, like, you know, params find, it's going to touch the database, and then it's going to serve you back some data. And that data is going to come back as a string format in the same way that if you were to go to, um, I don't know, let's go to the Ed Team Wiki, all right? And you hit inspect, it's going to serve you back HTML just like this. And your browser is going to interpret that HTML into a web page. And so that's what that ERB is doing. It's just sending back a string as HTML. Then your browser knows exactly what to do once it sees this. It goes, oh, snap, doc type HTML. I know what to do with this. Chrome knows what to do. Safari knows what to do. It's going to start rendering the markdown. And that's like the big picture and how that's connecting. Did that, did that like make more sense about the internet? So I'm just sending back HTML. Is that cool? Awesome. Did that answer your question, Mike? That's a very good question. Yeah. Yeah. So params are coming through. HTML is getting sent back based on what I want to send because that's what the controller is doing and now you're the server. Jordan. Uh, most custom tests we were making in the MVC are those forms 
Okay. Uh, it was checking to see if it that. That's what it was looking at, right? Yes, that's what I was looking for. That's what when you're looking through a test, you're like, what the? But yeah, this is exactly what it's looking for. Great, great question. Did that clarify? Yeah. Awesome. So here in show, right, I can put anything I want, right? Like I can put, um, and I'm not going to spell it wrong, Jord, damn it, J-O-R-T. Yeah, 10, like this. No? J-O-H-R. Damn it. Right, is the best. Right, cool. Oh, dang it, dang it. You're, are you a serial killer? You're right. Let's keep that on the low pro. So in this hypothetical world, right, what we can do is we can test it again, right? Let's exit. And let's hit this route again. Serial killer three. So here I can just do this. Right? So what are my params? Right? Remember, I still set it to cool. And the ID is three coming from what's going on up here. So if I did this, oh man, that was embarrassing. If I did this, uh, a little bit of that, a little bit of that, boom, cool. And then I ERB'd and I actually spat back out what that string was. Somewhere in here, I should be able to find it. There it is. That is the dynamic route. All right? It's rendering the yield block inside the template. And that's what shows and comes through. And that's how your server is properly responding according to the route that you're hitting, processing the data, and then spitting back that HTML to the viewer, the client. Sure, what's up? Probably not. Yes. Yes. Um, so there's auto magic happening at Sinatra that automatically looks in the views for a layout and it will yield in that yield block whatever you put in the ERB that gets sent back from the server. So it's always going to wrap everything. Um, inside the yield block. Okay, so the yield block is specifically for things like the layout. Yes, this is what you send back. That's why I had this one paragraph tag, right, in my show page, right. but then this is all right here. Right? Great. Yeah? <clears throat> when you run the ERB serial killer show, why does nothing pop up? Oh, because um, remember, binding pauses the code. I have not hit ERB yet. But then you hit it, and there's something else in the do block. What do you mean the do block? So when you, when you try to that page, it executes the do block, which is going to send it to your code, not show the ERB. Yes. So you just did that with the binding, but that doesn't get sent back to the web page in any way. Uh, it will. I exit. I hit exit, as opposed to a command called continue which will just continue running the code. I actually literally just pause it, break it, and say stop, don't even run any further. So when we were looking, when we were looking back, it wasn't working. But when I take the binding out, um, you'll see that it will render. So if you went ready here, you could continue. Yes, unfortunately Pry uh, doesn't have continue, which will like, continue the code. There is a new gem that you'll learn, and I'll teach it to you in, in this mod, called Bybug, and it will show you like next and continue. You can go line by line and you can continue running code. Um, I have uh, attempted to make that available in mod one since I think it'd be very useful uh, and um, still working through that. Thank you. I think it's very useful. Um, and, and I think the students would think it's very useful as well. <laughs> so hopefully I could get that there. But yeah, let's let's take a look, right? So, so exit actually without the bank will just stop the binding. So we should be able to see Jordan's best. Right? I have been exiting with the bank, so it like just breaks out of the pry altogether and stops the session. Cool. 
So, boop, boop, boop. let's go a little bit show. So now I actually want to see all the details of a particular serial killer, right? And what do I have access to from this route? What was the data that was processed? Do you mind if I change this back? Yeah? Cool. So what do I have? Remember, the instance variable gets passed through into the view. So in the show page, I will have the serial killer. All right? And then what kind of deets do I want? All right? Name. And what else? Huh? OK. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what we want. Yeah. Uh, we're still talking about cereal, right? Okay. <laughs> what if you have like a big bowl? Is that like a double kill? Yes. <laughs> nice. All right, cool. So, P tag, right? We have uh, show page, right? Cool. So, let's take a look. If we go back to three, I should see show page, silly rabbit, and tricks. Silly rabbit. <laughs> yes, silly rabbit tricks. <coughs> cool. So what's the next one, right? What's the next one? We want to be able to create. So I have to have new, and I have to have this get and post, right? So let's do that. Straight from here, boom. Uh, in the controller. Right, I want to make a new one. First, I have to render the form, right? And then what do I have to do? I have to make the post, right? So let's dive into this a little bit. God, this formatting is breaking my heart. Ugh. Yeah, I'll know if you copied and pasted, right? <laughs> it's okay to do that. Boop, boop, boop. Sorry. Formatting is important. Cool, cool, sweet. So, what's going on over here? First, we're getting a new page, right? We actually have to get to the form first to ask for the user input, and then the user input, the form should be hitting this post route. And then what happens in the post? You want to make a new serial killer. Remember, these are are different because we talked about scoping, right? We're going to do new here. And then if it saves, I want to redirect to serial killer. Otherwise, I want to show the new page again. Why would I want to do that? That's so weird. New and not create. What is create? Yeah. Is new and save together, right? So for example, I talked a little bit about validations, right? What if I wanted to make sure that your password was strong enough? Right, for a user, right? Or in this case, um, your serial had to be an exist a real serial, right? You couldn't just put like S D A F K, whatever. Right? You had to put like tricks or count chocula or skittles, right? Yes. So what I want to do is I want to put new and if it saves, if it hits the database, right? Go back to the index. Otherwise, hey, there's something wrong send them right back to the form so they can make those updates, make those changes, right? And so I'll, I'll show you some more cool tricks, yeah? Although when you create a new item, wouldn't you want to view that item's page when you... Absolutely. So let's do that. Slash what? Hmm? Probably want, want some of this action then. Look. And then I can do what? There we go. All right, I could also use params, right? Because params will come through as well. Do you want to use params? Either way, it'll work, right? At this point, it's like user's choice. Whatever makes more sense for you. It makes more sense. It's more readable this way because I'm going to go to the serial killer I just made ID. Yeah? So be careful um, with the single quotes and the double quotes. Also, something I did not uh, point out, before we were just doing something like this, right? We were just doing something like this, show. Right? When we were in the application controller for yesterday, 
But now I want to go into a nested resource, right? I want to go into a serial killer folder with the show. I must wrap it in quotes. If you do not, it will read this and then it will stop. It will break right here. Okay? So if you're going to do a nested resource, put it in a string. That way it will read it as one object. Cool? Charlie. Oh, God, you're a G, man. Thank you. Anything else? Cool. So let's, uh, let's do the show page, right? So what's now? What do I want to show for my new user? Oh, very good. Thank you. Nailed it, right? So I like using this form tab because it already gives me the two things I absolutely need, the action and the post. If you want to hand jam it, manually do it, um, just make sure you ha have the action and the method. So here, what are we trying to do? We're trying to hit a post, patch, put, gets, delete. What do you want to hit? Post? Cool. And where do we want to post to? If, in case we forgot. Um, we want to post to what? Cool. Flash serial killer. Ah, oh, the wrong one. What a bum. Cool. And so what do I need in this form? I need input, right? So what's the type? Text? What's this name here again? What is this? Uh, how do I do? God. What's the comment over here? There it is, yeah. So what is uh, the name value? Um, no, so that is what the value is, right? Um, but that was a very good guess. The name is going to be the key for the params to come through that I showed you last time, right? So do you remember when I put like banana? And then on the other side, banana was the key that came through for params. I'll show you again, right? So here, <clears throat> what does serial killer have? The name, right? And what's the value? Value's empty right now, right? But what we can do is we can do something really cool, and I'll show you. So what's the other uh, value? Brand. Brand, right? And then what else do we need? We need a way to submit this form. Very good. All right. And what's the name for this? Submit. The name is submit. I don't think you need a name for the submit, right? You just need some sort of value to let people know I want to make that serial killer. All right? God. The weird things that happen in like computer science, right? Cool. So how do I hit this route? So what happened here? We just happened to hit this yesterday. What's it thinking? Why does it say ID equals new? Amazing. Man, bagels really help you guys, huh? <laughs> so for those that missed it, right, it thinks that new is some sort of ID as a params, right? And because it thinks that new is an ID, it's going to follow this, and it cannot find a serial killer Right? Couldn't find a serial killer with an ID of new. So in order to get around this, it's a bit hacky. We just move it on up. Bloop. Yes, Chris. So could you alternatively wrap that in the else statement inside serial killer? If that serial killer, if that serial killer is your reference ID, you already need that. Else, show the new page. Um, you can. Um, but it would not be useful because you would just move this up and it will never hit that if the new matches first. Um, but I do like the way you're thinking in terms of like protection, and that will come in handy much later. So continue to think along those lines. Awesome. So who understood why I moved this up? This is very, like, very important. Yes, awesome. Nice. I should bring in bagels every day. I'll go broke, but you'll learn a lot. Um, 
Cool. So let's do it. Nice. So I have this, right? And they're kind of empty, right? Which is like weird. Remember yesterday I did I did something else to make sure that they were labeled properly? <laughs> I could put label, right? Or I want to show you something. Right, instead of value, we can change these to something called placeholder. Right? And so it will not actually put in hard-coded value. It will put in like a faded value that won't take. Right? But it will show. So name, please. Right? And this is the brand. Ah, just leave it alone. So if I refresh in here, you'll see it's kind of grayed out. It doesn't actually have a value. Like if I hit make that serial killer, the params don't get passed through. Placeholder is literally exactly what it says. It's just a placeholder. So once I click, right, and I start typing, right, like real serial, it's gone. But you could have done a label instead of on top, right? Hmm? Could have done a label. I could have done a label. Usually, uh, you'll see a label and placeholder because it's just a good user experience. Can you put like Inside where? Inside this? Yeah. Like a background image inside a form? Yeah. Uh, I think I've never personally added an image in a placeholder, but I'd be curious to see what happens if you wanted to try it. Do you guys want to try it right now? Sure. Yes. Uh, sure. Cool. Give me an image. Make it uh, flat iron school appropriate, yeah. Okay, bongo cat? That's hot right now. So hot right now. Bongo cat. Oh, yeah. Give me that. So how do I do it? All right. So I need to copy the image address. Because remember, if I just paste it, I'll have that exact image address. Right? That was kind of cool, right? Where have you always seen this online? I've seen it with guitar here, so someone put Bongo Cat in guitar. You can go inspect the page. We could. Um, so I, I don't, I don't even know how to do this, to be honest. So like, what, what do you think, Chris? You want, you want just drop it right here? <laughs> like in the placeholder. Let's do it. Let's do it. You guys are wild. Serial killers, bongo cats. This is a good class. Oh, so womp womp womp. You mean like right here instead of placeholder? Yeah. You want to get so wild? Get Dude, you're out of control. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. How do we do this? <laughs> That would be it, yeah. Actually, that would be it. You would like use CSS. I don't think HTML will take uh, an image tag. Yeah. What can you do? Hold on, hold on. Let's let's let let's let's get wild. Hold on, let's get wild. Ready? Let's get let's get wild. Let's embed this image directly in here, yeah. inside the input, uh, and this is like what is it? href? No, uh, yeah, source. Right? You guys are wild. Yeah, let's just get rid of this. Okay. All right. Hey, if this doesn't work, we gotta, we gotta like move on, right? <laughs> no, they, <laughs> it didn't quite work. Self-closing, yeah. Dang it, they are self-closing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if we could do this, but you know what? Let's just break the internet, right? 
Okay. All right. And there it is. There's my carrot. <laughs> Which is interesting because it's technically inside the input field. I should be able to... to where is the input, actually? <laughs> oh, no. Oh my god, it's in there. Do you see that? It's really there. This lecture is absolutely worthless now, but it's fine. <laughs> it's really there, look. So, so if you click right after the image, does it click with your cursor like? Oh my god. I can't, I can't type now. Yeah. Th yeah, this is treated as garbage. It's interesting though because it it changes my cursor. So it's there, but the, the field itself is gone. So. Interesting. Interesting. Sorry, I let you down. Uh, if I ever figure it out, I will let you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Uh huh. And that's I've been told that before. <laughs> it's not you. It's the HTML. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Time to get a gallon of vanilla ice cream. All right. Um. Cool. <clears throat> Uh, Alright, so I'm going to speed through the rest because you guys wanted to do that. Uh, but essentially, what's going to wind up happening is, let's go to the controller. All right, before we hit anything, a good sanity check is always checking the pry to see what's going on. See, first, can I hit the route that I'm trying to hit as well as what actually happens here. Right. So I want to make sure I'm hitting this post to serial killer. In my new, I'm going to a post for serial killer. The routes match, that's good news. So let's see if we can hit it. Ready? Sorry, the cat's gone. Ready? Uh, I have some like, what's a serial? What's a name? I don't know. I'm blanking here. Sure. The Count and Chocula. Chocula. That's weird spelling, either way. It should hang, all right? Do you see this? So what are params that are coming through? We have name for count and brand for chocula, right? And again, if I were to put uh, something else, right, in here in this name field, right? What we can do is blah blah blah. Cool. Boop, boop. All right, and then we have uh, foobar. It's like a generic statement in the dev world. So if I check params here, notice how something else is now that key. I want to make sure that the name, the value that comes in here are always going to line up with the attributes of my object. Because I'm going to pass in what? I'm just going to pass in params. OK, this is like advanced level stuff. I'm just going to pass in params. So I want to make sure all the keys match up to the attributes for the serial killer. And the way I do that is to make sure that in the value, the attribute names line up. Yeah? Make sense? Sebastian? If they don't line up, how does the table save it if it's got a new key that doesn't match the column? It will ignore it and it will come back as nil. Okay. So do you want to try it? Uh, no. Is that, is that good enough? Okay. Yeah, that's really yeah. Good. That makes sense? That was a very good question. If I don't line it up, right, in the same way that um, I'm in IRB, right? So I can just do um, like hash equals to, um, I don't know, what do we have? Like seb. Uh, and we can point that to like cool guy smooth. Cool. So if I have H here, if I call the key, what do I get? Cool guy smooth. But if I call H with a key that doesn't exist, like loser wangtron, right, what do I get? I get nil. So if the keys never match, the other fields just become nil within the, uh, within the object. Yeah? Awesome. All right, so 
I know I'm going to hit this route because I can obviously hit the binding. All right? I'm going to pass in the params into serial killer. When it saves, if it saves, it's going to redirect to the serial killer with that ID. So let's check it. Ready? I'm in new. I'm refresh so I can get a, a clean page. Why is it hitting a binding? Oh, I never get rid of this. Okay. Actually, ironically, it worked. So we'll go to new. We'll put in just some name and we'll put in some brand. As like the lectures go on, like you'll see the test data gets lazier. <laughs> Why is it hanging? I still have the binding. Interesting that I still hit that binding. All right, so like, see, it gets lazier. Did I not save? Oh, embarrassing. Sorry. Sorry. So. Cool. So did you see the internal server error? All right. Why do you think it hit that? So here, remember I exited with a bang. So I probably returned a status 500 because on the server side, under shotgun, I canceled the operation. So on the server side, something went wrong. So it came back to the browser as probably a status 500 server error, where a status 400 is more like the file's not there, it's like a client side error. Does that make sense? Did I like connect a little bit more about HTTP status codes? Cool. So let's do it. Oh yeah, this test data is just trash. Oh, okay, so it breaks, right? Because I, I have the attribute of something else, and it did not properly save. So let's fix that to brand. Cool. Let's go back to new. All right, let's make some, some really good test data. And then hopefully it shows me to the show page for all this. Yeah? All right, cool. So we're going to wrap up here. Um, we did this show already, but again, edit, right? I would copy this form, because in the same way edit is like new, I have to show the form first, all right? So let's do it. Boop, boop, boop. Let's put it under edit. I'll show the form first. That's why it's going to be a get. And then what is this get going to post to? A put or a patch, right? So, what is the difference between put and patch? Mm -hmm. Right. Put does what versus patch? So, in the name patch itself, I'm just going to patch it, right? I'm just going to throw a little bandaid on it. I'm fixing a small little piece of a record. The put is I'm going to put in a brand new record. So put is going to replace the whole entry with something new. Patch is just going to update a small piece of it. All right? So put and patch is sometimes used interchangeably in terms of update, but words mean things. right? And so ones is just going to be a little bit more specific. So here, I obviously need to hit the correct resource. I need the ID for what I'm going to edit, and then I'm going to make sure I'm hitting the edit route. So if I hit this, right? Because remember, I need to touch the database first to get what I'm trying to edit, and then I'm going to go show page for edit. So what page am I going to show? The ERB, right? I said it's like new, except this time, what am I hitting? Yeah, I got to be I got to be a little sneaky, right? So what was it? A little sneaky. Uh, that wasn't sneaky. And then what is this? What am, what am I hiding? The actual method I want to hit, right? And what is it? I want to hit patch. And that's how I'm going to force it to hit patch because it only knows get and put, get and post. Doesn't it need to be Oh, yeah, you're right. Good job. Thank you. Was that what you were, was that what you were going to say? Awesome. Copy and paste sometimes not your friend. <laughs> cool, right? So now instead of placeholder, right, if I'm editing something, 
do those values already exist? Yes. So I can have value here, and I can put what? What do I have here already? I have the serial killer, right? Uh, and I have what? The name? And then I have, and I have the brand already. So let's do that. So I want to go to seven. Actually, seven's, seven's a terrible idea. Let's go to two, and we'll go to edit, right? Why am I going to two edit? Well, yeah, the good test data. But I'm hitting the, the route, the ID, and then the edit. Is it doing that? Yeah, it's being a punk. Cool. Great debug. Go team. So look, because I put the value in, Right, lucky and me lucky charms are already in there, right? So I can put unlucky, because he always gets robbed, and now he has no charms, right? Shame. So once I hit that, what what happens? What's going on? Unknown attribute underscore method. Hmm? What I need to do here? Same thing I did last time, right? I need to be able to like set. And then it was like method override to true. That didn't look right. That looked right? That probably looks right. Yeah. Such good test data. That's not how to do it. I can look at the last one, but I'm too lazy. Huh? Plus the lecture is getting really long, but this is like what I'm missing essentially. All right, I need to be able to like understand why it doesn't understand the underscore method. That's how it was yesterday. It was. Do you maybe need to put it in? Yeah. 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 Ye
for primps. This is coming through. Yeah, it doesn't exist. It's not gonna work yet. Why is edit not giving me the params? It should be giving me this. Interesting. No, it should be ID first. Amit Restular got me. Got me good. Oh, I'm not. I lost the ID. Sorry. I got rid of it in my mad dash to try to fix this. Hmm? Cool. 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 Alright. Sorry for this. Oh, thank you. Alright. Here we go. This is it. This is the one. This is the one. Come on. <laughs> I'm gonna fix this, right? But not. Uh, I'm not gonna like drag you guys down while I debug it. I'm gonna fix it and push up the code. Is that actually the post? Because it was really sending a post with it. What happened? In the application controller. Why is it doing this now? Oh, the route. This. What a punk. This right here, that's why. All right. So I didn't like ERB, um, the, like I don't send it to the right one. Once I get it, where is the, yeah, I should be sending it to the ID. That makes more sense. Does that, does that make sense to people? Like why I was hitting that instead? Such good debugging, right? Um, I'm sorry, I have the Ruby interpolate here. So we have at serial killer .id. So, wait, what you so um, before it was hitting, and then it stopped hitting because I changed the route, right? And I changed the route in the controller, and I added this ID back in because I needed this ID for the params, and then I never sent it to the correct one. Oops, did I put it in new? Ugh, ridiculous. Should be putting it edit. Cool. Does that make sense? Is that better? <laughs> Crashing and burning up here. It'll work. All right, this is the one. This is the one. <laughs> Almost. All right. So this is a really good example of like reading the error message and just debugging, right? Just hammering away, banging it out one at a time. Who wants to see me like do this? Or you want to see me do this? Or do you want to like kill it and break and work on labs? All right. Oh, there is no param serial killer. Restula got me good. Got me good. So what are the params here? Right? We didn't assign up attribute. We should be updating. And we have name with the params of name. You'll learn all this like fancier ways to do things later. So this is what is known as like a short feedback loop. I change one thing, I try again. I read the new error message. I change one thing, I try again. And this is all about like testing. You see what happens when I wrote too much code? Now it's just like a nightmare to debug because I started copying and pasting from something and instead of going like one step at a time. Right? This is actually a really good example. Sorry I'm falling on my face, but it's better that you can kind of see how, how painful it is to try to debug when you write a lot of code without testing it one step at a time. What I just wrote, did that make sense? Because right? I'm getting those params back. All right. For all the marbles. <gasps> Actually, let's just go pew, 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 pew. All right, just so I know it's a little different. Yes. Yeah. Get, get nervous up here. All right. So, 
to summarize, right? Um, I copied something from the internet, and then it didn't work. <laughs> but because I understood what was happening, I was able to make the adjustments to make it work for me and for the code that I was using, right? Uh, later on, I will show you how I can get the code that I copied to work in more of a next level metaprogramming. But for now, I know that I have a name, I have a brand. Those are the params that I pass through, right, inside my edit form because I have a name and a brand. My, my params name, params brand. And then I was able to, uh, to uh, update those attributes. I forced it to hit this patch. I needed the ID in order for the params ID to work properly. All right? And I needed to um, hit the edit form first. That was like a little bit roundabout. Hopefully, it made the understanding even better and you're able to read the error messages and debug them like I did. But if you cannot, um, call Brook or I over. As you can tell, everyone makes these mistakes, and they're sometimes a bit tricky to, to navigate. But the important thing is to understand. So CRUD functionality, RESTful routing, right? RESTful routing. So you have all of this here. This is RESTful routing, right? Because you're hitting the same stuff no matter what you're doing, whether it be something as interesting as books or as boring as murder face, right? Any, what are your questions, rather, for RESTful routing and CRUD? Could you repeat? So RESTful routing is basically This is a convention, right? So that your API, your back end, this is the back end, right? Your controller, your data, your endpoints, Anytime someone hits your website with a specific route, they know what they're going to get, right? When they hit your serial killer slash index, they know that you're going to get all the serial killers. Doesn't matter what they are, but that's what you're going to get, right? That's the convention. Oh, so it's just restaurant is just in general. The sounds like really popular. Okay, I see. No, absolutely. Did almost hear that? This thing is like growling. Okay. Right. It just make I, you're right. Yeah. This computer's after me. Um, I'm gonna stop the recording.